All right, as you just heard, this call is now being recorded. Once again, my name is Kate Brown, the Director of Events and Education with Discus, and we're excited to have you here for the Discus Academy Leadership Interest Webinar. Uh, we're going to get started with a quick overview of the leadership program, and then we'll get into the part that I know that everyone wants to hear the Q&A with our program graduates, but we'll first um, do a quick overview of the program. So if you can go to the next slide. All right, um, so I'm going to get into the details of each program shortly, but first um, I'll talk about the program as a whole. Um, within the leadership certificate program, we have three leadership program tailored to various career stages and experience levels. And those programs are the Developing Leadership Program, the Developing Women Leadership Certificate Program, which is our all new, um, all female cohort um, that we're starting this year in collaboration with Women of the Vine and Spirits, and our Executive Leadership Program. Each program is taught in partnership with a university partner. So the Cornell program is taught with the Developing Leadership Certificate and the Developing Women Leadership Program. And the University of Kentucky uh, program is taught with the executive leaders. The application process is now open and each uh, cohort will admit a max of 30 students per cohort. It is an eight month program um, consisting of both virtual and in-person elements. And we'll talk about those a little bit later. Um, and then later in the program, you will meet Kate Wiggins, who is our program coordinator. And she's our, essentially our facilitator who works closely with the cohorts throughout the program. So if we can go to the next slide. All right, so we'll first talk about our developing leadership program. Okay, so who is this program for? This program is for um, early stage managers, those who maybe don't have a lot of management experience. Um, you may be an entrepreneur, um, you're new to the industry. Any of those people are encouraged to apply. Next slide. All right, so this gets into the schedule for the program. Um, I'll just give kind of a brief description of uh, these um, different program elements. Um, and this is located on our website in the application. So each, um, so this program will start off with our introductory meeting. So it'll give students a chance to get to know each other, meet the fellow members of their cohort, the course facilitator, Kate, as a group, you'll establish norms, expectations, and goals uh, for what you want out of the program. Next is the type indicator workshop. So we use the predictive indicator, predictive index type indicator uh, to learn your strengths and weaknesses. Um, and that will really provide a framework with which you'll work with throughout the, the rest of the year. Next up is our CEO and insights, um, CEO insights and culture session. So that's an interview style session with industry CEOs where participants will get to interact um, with CEOs, ask questions on a range of topics relating from leadership uh, to their personal journeys, career advice, et cetera. Next up is the stress and health as a leader session. Um, so this session gets into how stress affects your leadership style and how we can not only manage our stress, but the stress of our team members. The Dare to Lead uh, session is actually three sessions. Um, it starts, the program starts during the spring and then you finish up the coursework um, at the leadership retreat. So the Dare to Lead program is, um, this, this session breaks down the four courage building skills um, that make up brave leadership. And on completion of the whole program, you will receive a certificate. Uh, the next component, the Discus Annual Conference, it is an, an optional um, element of the program. We host a, a reception for current um, participants of the program and current participants in, in all cohorts, not just the developing cohort, um, and, and for alumni to just engage and interact with each other. So this is actually going to be the first time that you'll meet in person during the program. These earlier sessions are all virtual sessions on Zoom. This will be the first time that you get to meet with each other and interact. All right, and then we'll have the Cornell program and I'll get, I think, into that in the next slide. Um, but that 
programming starts in June and ends in September. While you're doing the Cornell program, because it is quite a bit of work, uh, the, the cohort calls that you had in the spring, they're, it, they're not going to be as frequent. So these cohort calls are once a month. And they're really to discuss the, the Cornell content and how you can apply that content to your everyday job. So those are once a month for about an hour. And then you um, will come to our, our leadership retreat, which is a culmination of the program. It is mandatory. Um, we'll have a graduation ceremony. And it's a way for us to tie together all of the learnings um, that you've had throughout the year. Um, and it's often um, people's favorite part of the program. All right, so we'll get into the, the next slide. All right, so listed here um, are the courses that the developing leaders will take as part of the Cornell programming. So you see that there are three courses listed here, and then there are two additional electives that you'll choose from, um, from the Cornell Leadership Program course offerings. Um, each course is about two weeks long, and then there's a week break in between each of the courses, and you can expect to spend about five to seven hours of work on each course. So I think that is it for the developing leadership program. I believe that's the last slide. Um, so I'll now turn it over to Vicki Prosser, who is our industry education manager, and she will talk about the executive leadership program. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, like she said, my name is Vicki Prosser, and I am the Industry Education Manager for Discus. Um, so I primarily um, work with Discus Academy, and moving forward, I will be moving um, into the, the role of the leadership program. So I will be working very closely with Kate Wiggins to make sure that all of the participants um, of this program have everything they need and are moving through the program. Um, so with that, I'm going to talk about the Executive Leadership Program specifically. Um, this program is more geared towards um, experienced professionals, five to seven years um, in the industry um, who have, you know, responsibilities, um, leadership, subordinates um, at a much higher level than the developing program. Um, it's going to build on any leadership skills that you already have, um, and it's just going to help you become a better leader within the industry. Um, our program structure for the executive leaders is very similar to that of the developing cohort. Um, we're going to start off with that introductory meeting so that you all can meet each other. Kate Wiggins, the course facilitator, and establish baseline rules um, for how you all are going to operate as a cohort. Um, you'll also do the predictive index workshop, which will um, allow you to see how you are um, in the office and how you would be best suited um, in a managerial um, sort of position. From there, we're gonna shift into self-motivation, accountability, and self-help, which is going to focus really on your social and emotional needs as a leader, how to manage stress, and how to take care of yourself and your team um, as you move up in the leadership ranks. Um, then we're going to move to cultivating entrepreneurship and innovation, um, which is a little bit different. Most people hear of entrepreneurship, but entrepreneurship is what we see within an organization and how we can establish a culture of innovation and growth within an organization. Um, so that is a really exciting course that we have added for this upcoming cohort. Um, the next two courses are our um, DEI and receiving and giving feedback courses. The Conversations of Race and Allyship in the Workplace is our DEI course um, focused specifically on leadership and what specific actions you can take as a leader and your organization can take to make sure that you are supporting the organization and individual employees um, with regards to race and allyship. The giving and receiving feedback course is how to, um, just like the title says, um, appropriate and constructive feedback and how to have difficult conversations with employees um, and with your own leaders um, to make sure that the organization and people are developing and moving forward. Um, from here, we'll move to the University of Kentucky programming, which I'll get into in a second. And just like the developing cohort, we're going to have um, cohort calls at the end of every um, course. So we will have courses together, or calls together, excuse me, that'll be about an hour. Um, and that's gonna go over the courses that you've just finished. Um, and it'll be an opportunity for you to apply anything that you've learned to your day-to-day um, -day work. 
Um, and then just like developing, we will end with our uh, mandatory leadership retreat the week of October 22nd. So for that, um, Kentucky Programming, um, this is a course that has been, a certificate program, excuse me, that has been specifically developed by the University of Kentucky for the um, spirits industry. So you're going to take these five courses um, that are two weeks long and, again, five to seven hours per week. Um, you can see the course descriptions here, and you will also have um, about a week break in between all five courses. And then I think we're going to move now to the new women's program. Thank you, Vicki. All right, just like Vicki said, um, we have a new program this year in collaboration with Women of the Vine and Spirits, and that's our Developing Women Leadership Program. So here to talk with us a little bit about that program is Deborah Brenner, CEO and founder of Women of the Vine and Spirits. Welcome, Deborah. Hi, thank you. Uh, very excited to speak about this program. Um, we are just thrilled to be working in partnership with Discus on this, and um, I think we have a couple of slides. Is that um, correct to go into? Yeah, great. Thank you. <laughs> so um, just a little bit of why women only, right? Because I'm sure many of you, and we have a lot of men on the, uh, on the webinar today. Um, so we're offering this for the first time in partnership, and there are some really clear, um, you know, uh, statistics and and studies of why having a, a women owner leadership training is has a benefit. Uh, you can see this here um, because of the fact of being in a safe space, being able to share things that that they feel more comfortable about doing. Um, also, like we always say, if you can't um, see it, you can't be it. So, um, as you see here, having a woman only leadership training. Um, it has proven that, that participants gain confidence. Um, it creates a place where women can learn with, with female peers. So it also strengthens relationships and bonds and uh, networking opportunities since um, this cohort is all within the BevAlk industry. Um, they also can share different experiences that they have uh, experienced as women. And as we know, especially working in a traditionally male-dominated industry. And that's going to also strengthen their confidence and help them develop in this all-woman leadership training. Um, having a peer-to-peer a -peer women learning experience also fosters important professional networks. Like I said, uh, we are finding that uh, the cohorts prior and as well as our scholarship cohorts um, they are bonding and they remain to be in touch and um, you know, working with one another, bouncing ideas off one another, even after they finish the program and graduate. So we can go to the next slide. So who should apply for this program? Um, and you'll also notice that we have discounts for DISCUS members and Women of the Mind and Spirits members. So um, a lot of you are corporate members and employee members or individuals, so please um, uh, just take notice of that. Uh, who should apply for this program is women or those that identify as women that prefer to learn in this all-women environment. Um, female entrepreneurs, new managers, and employees with limited management e experience that are looking to develop and go to that next step. And this Developing Leaders Program is also appropriate for women that are new to the spirits industry and looking to grow their leadership skills specifically in the industry and to network across the sector. That's really important when we talk about uh, bringing in and hiring people from outside to have more diverse um, thinking. And so we really encourage to go through um, the Developing Women's Leadership Program. We could go to the next slide. So what are the components? Um, Kate, am I supposed to go through these? Oh, no, I'll, I'll go through this. Yep, I'll Perfect. go through this part. And <laughs> um, just so you guys know, Deborah is going to be staying on the call to answer any questions that you have about the Developing Women Leadership Program. Um, so if you have some questions for her, please do put those in the Q&A. So yeah, I will get into uh, this portion. Um, uh, I won't go over some of the things that we went over last time, but you'll see that the schedule is very similar to the developing program. 
You'll start with the introductory meeting. You'll have the type indicator workshop. Um, we will be combining the CEO insights and stress, stress and health as a leader um, sessions. So that'll just be a little bit longer. We'll start with CEO insights first, and then we'll move into the stress and health as a leader. Um, and then next up is the PNL responsibility for women course um, that we thought was really important to have in this session. So this will dis discuss the importance of PNL responsibility in advancing your career and how that can provide. And this will um, the session will also provide a, a practical training for some of those um, those principles. Um, Dare to lead is up next. We have the conference followed by the Cornell programming, which will also be a little bit different from the developing program, um, the monthly cohort calls, and then of course the mandatory leadership retreat. All right, so a little bit different from the developing program, um, the participants in the developing we women leadership certificate will receive the women in leadership certificate from Cornell. So these are the courses that you will take as part of this certificate program. And again, same as the Cornell programming for developing women, two weeks long um, for the, each of the little mini courses, and then five to seven hours of work for each course. And I believe that is the last slide. All right. So I'll turn it over to the portion that I think that everyone is really excited about is our Q&A portion that will be led by our program facilitator, Kate Wiggins. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Kate. I'm delighted to be here and to talk about this program. I have been fortunate to facilitate it for the last two years, and we are just going into our third year for the class of 2023. I have some graduates here from the classes of 21 and 22 um, who are keen to answer your questions. Uh, I'm going to ask each of our panelists to introduce yourselves. Um, I will uh, start off by nominating Caitlin to go first. And Caitlin, if you will just call on a fellow panelist to go next, uh, we'll circle it around to all five of you before we get into our Q&A. Absolutely, thank you. Um, Caitlin Zebus, National On-Premise Manager with Moss Jägermeister US. Um, I was part of the executive leadership cohort and I will turn it over to Connor McKenna. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, I, was, I had the honor of being in the same executive leadership cohort with Caitlin. My name is Connor McKenna. I'm a portfolio director at Pronghorn, uh, and I will pass it over to Juliana. Hi, I'm Juliana Lang. I'm the regional director for North Central for Bacardi. Um, also amazing to have participated of the, the leadership uh, with Kate, um, and I'll pass it off to Ashley. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Noble. I was recently part of the Developing Leaders Program or cohort, I should say, uh, second cohort. Um, I'm with Mo at Hennessy. I'm currently the Hennessy Communications Coordinator. And I'll pass it over to Dave. <laughs> Ashley, you're going you're gonna to forget about me? Come on. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Dave Smith. I am uh, the head distiller and vice president at St. George Spirits. And I had the honor of uh, being an executive, uh, the executive co cohort in 2021. Thank you all, Dave. I'll ask you to go first on this one so you feel special again. I would love to hear from each of the five of you uh, about your personal goals coming into the program. And did the program get you there? Where, um, what were your expectations coming in? What were the outcomes for you at the end? Dave, kick us off. Uh, thank you, Kate. Um, and I, uh, I would say that for me, the expectations for the program, the hope for the program was to, um, it wasn't about a job, it wasn't about, it wasn't about a promotion. Um, it was about growth. It was about personal growth and professional growth and trying to ensure that I was uh, hopefully being a, becoming, working towards a better version of myself. Um, so much of what I learned in the program through the coursework uh, really came down to uh, leadership and service. Um, and so it was something where trying to see my own uh, capabilities, appreciate where um, I didn't have insight and sort of growing my toolbox of what I had to problem solve, attack, look at things at a tactical level and strategic level and really be a better a better service to my teammates 
is uh, what I came away with from the program. Will you popcorn it for us? Absolutely. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and pop it back to Ashley. Oh, thank you. Um, so what I came into the program looking for was um, some mentorship and also looking to uh, network with others that were in the industry. I'm fairly new to the industry, only been with Hennessy for four years now. Um, haven't moved into the managerial space yet. Um, but, you know, this program, I was able to take away a lot of skills, like Dave said, to add to my toolbox um, and really talk to others um, and see and learn really what they're doing in their roles so that I know what I need to be a, become a manager. So I was really happy to be able to take that away. I keep forgetting. I'll pass it to Caitlin. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, Ashley. Um, personally, uh, it, this program for me going into it was about growth as well, just like Dave. I wanted to um, develop myself as a manager. I've been managing in some capacity or another for the past 15 years or so. And um, I really kind of wanted to understand my go-to behaviors and how I can improve upon my weaknesses and gain some development and areas of strength that come naturally to me. And I also really wanted to understand my responsibility as a leader through the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and how I could really build upon that and, and be the best leader that I could be for my team. And I can honestly say that one speaker in particular, which I knew Kate was gonna smile when I said that, because everybody loves that one speaker, um, definitely, definitely opened our eyes to the subject of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, in a way that I don't think many of us had really approached it previously. So definitely valuable, beyond valuable. I'll pass it to Juliana. Awesome, Caitlin. So yes, same as Dave and Caitlin, I joined. We were the first uh, group. Uh, so we weren't really aware of exactly how the program would land, uh, but I joined for personal growth and uh, it was incredible. I think that the networking piece was uh, very good to be able to uh, share experiences with people from other companies and see that we're going through the same challenges. And to be honest, it's been two years and we're still very close. Uh, so everybody that participated of the group still talks to each other. So networking is definitely a great one. Uh, but on the growth uh, side of things, uh, you know, the the Cornell uh, that we did um, was also super valuable. I think that it gave us tools instead of being just very, uh, you know, based on theory, it was practical. It gave us uh, action items that we can take to our teams and put in practice as soon as we we learned uh, the lessons we were able to go ahead and start practicing those those tools and it was very beneficial I still use those tools to this date and I think that it really helped me uh, get to a next level of um, you know leadership and think of leadership not just as management but uh, on coaching and developing your own your own team now pass it to Connor. Yeah, I'll bring up the rear here. Uh, I have to echo what everyone everyone in the team here is saying. Uh, I was part of the second cohort, so I had a little bit of sense of what I was getting myself into, but uh, it was mostly a drive and purpose to be intentional in my own personal growth. I think, you know, obviously experience is one of the, the best teachers, but uh, this was an opportunity to force myself into a new and sometimes uncomfortable situation of really assessing myself and my strengths and my weaknesses and looking for ways to directly address those gaps and come up with actionable work streams to, to address those. And uh, I think I what I most got out of this, especially I think I'll talk a little bit more about it down the road, but uh, in my new role in Pronghorn, I was entering a new space, uh, the nexus of, of race and allyship, and I wanted to, you know, more further immerse myself in this space and become more educated and more knowledgeable about how to to lead with intention and, and with inclusivity and i think the my my highlight about this whole process was recognizing and seeing that these these problems that developing and executive leaders all face there's a common thread that connects all of us and being in a room with everyone who is very openly sharing 
their personal experiences with the challenge and hearing that you're not going through it alone and hearing that people who've gone through it recently or currently in the moment, just those kind of brainstorming sessions was outstanding. Uh, and I think the relationships we built did go beyond the four walls of these Zoom screens and this Hollywood Square type scenario, which has been, which has been uh, a, a real pleasure. Thanks, Connor. This may be a good time uh, to insert for those of you who are joining us as prospective members of the class of 2023, that we do have a code of confidentiality that we establish early on. And so while there are certainly, uh, as you're all very well um, uh, versed with um, industry regulations um, that we want to be mindful of, we're also uh, intentional about creating a space where everybody can be a little vulnerable about like, hey, this kind of sucks for me. Does it suck for you too? And then you can kind of dig into it and do some real, real serious problem solving together. My next question is for Juliana and Dave. And Juliana, I'll cue you up first since you sort of alluded to it in your last answer. I'd love for you to talk about the impact uh, that this program has had on you and your career since you graduated uh, in the fall of last year, just over a year ago. Yes, absolutely. So uh, although we joined, uh, I had another person from my company also joined the same uh, class as I did, uh, and we joined it for personal growth and just to continue to develop as leaders. Uh, both of us have been taking new roles after the the Discus um, Academy. So we're both now, um, yeah, we were both um, promoted. So it was very exciting to see that everything that we were putting in practice actually, uh, you know, turned out to be uh, great for our careers. Um, and uh, it did instigate a lot of people from the company to uh, want to join uh, last year's, uh, um, you know, course. So it definitely was a great impact. But um, but overall, I think that the impact on the networking piece and just on having more tools in my box in my toolbox was incredible. Um, and the discussions with everybody, um, I think that that was very valuable. How about you, Dave? Yeah, I um, you know I I would I, I think the the thing that I go to about this uh, in terms of just the impact that I, that that I've enjoyed is um to be perfectly honest it's that i'm i'm less anxious i'm less scared um being a boss is really lonely and hard and uh, it can be intimidating and it's part of what i came away with was uh, you know incredible cohort friendships uh peers mentorship um you know and this toolbox of, of strategy and the ways to approach problems and challenges it also uh, gave me the the freedom to understand that it's it's okay not to have the answers. It's okay not to have it all figured out, and to see others who are going through similar problems, similar challenges, and to be able to explore that space and and kind of work through it together was uh, just extraordinary and continues to have an impact on me. I love hearing that. Thanks, Dave. And um, I want to bring Deborah back in for a question to talk about. Uh, this developing women cohort, which is new for next year. We've heard from our five panelists looking back at the last two years. Let's look forward to 2023. What kinds of skills, Deborah, are you hoping that the women in the developing women cohort come away from this program with? Well, I think there's so many skills, right? And we're hearing it from all of the cohort. I think this is just so fabulous. Um, I want to pull quotes and testimonials from this to help promote um, because I, you're saying such wonderful things. Uh, Caitlin, I'd love to hear more about the speaker, uh, but I think uh, one of the big things is, first of all, DEI is so critically important. Uh, it's a business imperative. Uh, so for any leader, I love that, that hearing you um, is that that you've the, the cohort and Cornell and the and the coursework has opened your eyes to what an inclusive leader looks like. What's what do you need to do to lean into that? What is it like to build a culture of inclusivity and belonging? How do you interview and and check your unconscious biases when you're doing that? You know, these are the things that are going to really, I think, um, make not just as a good leader, it's going to make your company and your teams extremely strong because 
study after study has proven that, you know, more diversity in your teams, the more innovation, the more creativity, and, and obviously that for strategy and staying on top in a very competitive industry like BevAlk, I think is critical. So I just, I, I love seeing that this was a part of it. And, um, and I think going forward, um, all of the, the leadership programs and the development and the executive are critically important. And obviously the all women, um, it's the first time we're looking to do that. We're just hoping that will give some women a little extra confidence. And to your point, Dave, being a leader and being a boss and running a company, it is scary and it is lonely. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about all of the programs, but the all women, I think, may give some women that are a little bit hesitant, maybe not as confident, maybe feel a little bit of the imposter syndrome, um, that they're going to find uh, their superpowers in, in that cohort. Love it, Deborah. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, now that we've heard some general outcomes, I want to ask some questions that are going to give our attendees some insight on some of the particulars of the content. So, Connor, I'm going to put this into you. Tell us about the PI session that comes at the beginning, the predictive index. This is a component for all three cohorts. How did you feel about that session and how it got you started as yeah. part of the process? Yeah, it's a great question, Kate. I mean, I think um, I I, ha I wasn't a stranger to predictive. I, you know, it's like a personality test kind of thing. But really, it's 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 more of a measure of what comes natural to you, and what are your natural default settings in certain scenarios. But also, like similar to what I was saying before, what are some natural gaps and strengths that you have, and let's make ourselves aware of those gaps because they may be blind spots in how we operate on a day to day. And you can see the power in coming up with work streams to directly address those. So uh, for me, it kind of set the tone for the, for the program of this is what this is about. This isn't like we are here to make each other better and know everyone can improve on something. Doesn't matter what stage you are in your career. Uh, you know, you can always be learning and growing. So I think that helps set the tone. And also for our cohort specifically, you know, I was I was a little apprehensive about sitting in a room. I, I was working at Dia, I was working for Diageo at the time, and I was there's Jaegermeister, and there was uh, all, all you know competitors for lack of a better term. Um, and I thought like that session really opened up everyone just as individuals, and we we stopped view. It, there was never a moment in time where people were like, oh, I don't want to you know, maybe don't want to share this because it's the competition or that, that, that or matter. Like it was great for everyone just to recognize we're all try we're all here to try and improve ourselves and let's, let's work together to make it happen. I love that collaboration over competition. Absolutely. Within the context of this program. And um, as y'all were looking at the developing uh, leaders cohort schedules that Kate Brown shared with us earlier, you noticed there's a, a significant difference, uh, one significant difference from one to the next. And Deborah, I'd love for you to address this question. Um, we had added a p &L class to the developing women cohort. Why was it important to you and to your team uh, to add that into this cohort's experience? Um, you know, it really came up years ago. Um, I I remember, you know, speaking to some senior women leaders, um, and one in particular that uh, came into Bev out from uh, PepsiCo and Starbucks, and we were really just having a, a frank discussion of what's holding back a lot of women from getting into those C-suite roles, and P and L is one of the major issues because. Uh, depending on what role you have in the company, you don't always have um, the, you know, P&L balance sheet responsibilities, um, and that can really hold people back from, from elevating into those positions. You really need to understand operations, you need to understand P&L, especially if you want to um, aspire to the C-suite and to even CEO. Um, for entrepreneurs, critically important. 
Um, I, I had to learn the hard way myself. And Connor for Pronghorn, I'm sure you're going through this with some of the companies that you're investing and incubating. Um, for a lot of entrepreneurs, they're the visionaries. They're the ones that take risks. They're the ones that um, are creative and, and are solving problems. Doesn't mean that they're really great at running a PL and managing that. So it is critically important for um, anybody that's thinking about, you know, running a company or being in a company and advancing. Um, I'm super excited that that's added. Um, I think it's going to help a lot of people um, be able to advance their careers. I couldn't agree more, Deborah. Thank you for that. Um, I want to address the balance of taking on the commitment of this class, juggling your work, your personal life. And so uh, I'm going to pop this one over to Dave. Uh, talk to us a little bit about schedules, um, the work that's required. How did that balance and managing your various commitments go for you? Oh, okay, thank you. It was, it was easy. The, the entire time is cruise control. It didn't really require that much work. It's just, it's, you coast through. Um, I'm obviously kidding. No stretching at all. Yeah, there was, it, it, <laughs> it, it asks you to stretch. Um, it asks you to, you know, it, uh, most of, most people who I think are interested in these programs probably already have a pretty dynamic workload. Um, there's a lot that's already on, on the plates, uh, certainly, you know, balancing uh, work life and family life um, as well. And over and over again, um, I found that the the key for me was to just plan really effectively, create a brand new calendar overlay that I can can utilize that's just for the for my coursework um, and to try to look for those opportunities, create those opportunities and and be mindful about uh, about being efficient with this where uh, if I'm traveling, you know, I'm in an airport, uh, I could I could be flipping through social media while I'm waiting at the gate, or I could have actually printed out some coursework, have that with me, or be accessing it uh, remotely and and working through uh, through my through my courses with that. Um, that was kind of a, a key element was just looking at the entire calendar and sort of building this in to what I expected of, my, of myself. Um, you know, you'll you'll kind of find some time on on weekends, uh, in the evenings, obviously. And um, one of the elements that I did find I was a little surprised by, but um, I found to be pretty effective was that a lot of the coursework um, in the 2021 executive uh, leadership course uh, actually was pretty applicable to some of the uh, challenges and uh, 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 pieces I was working through at work at the time. So there was sort of an opportunity to uh, create um, to, uh, uh, to create work. Uh, a great example of this, there was a, a one of the one of the classes I did was on uh, presentations. You had to write through, create a I created like a nine minute, you know, presentation, um, and but it was actually something that I could utilize for marketing materials and to work with our our, our team in house. It was problem solving for a, a work question as well as something that applied to my coursework at the same time, and sort of applying my coursework, you know, that same week into something I was being challenged by. That that's kind of that's kind of perfect. I'm sort of I'm getting a lot of bang for my buck with my uh, time investment at that point. So. Um, there, there are weeks that you're going to question why you're doing it. Um, I'll say that not every person in, who started out in our class actually finished it. Um, but the folks who you get through it, um, you get through it because you care about it. You get through it because you know it's important. And it's worth your time. You have to invest in, in your own growth and, and success here. Um, and this is a great way to do it. So I, I, I enjoyed most of it. And uh, the parts I didn't enjoy, I learned a lot from as well. <laughs> If only it was comfortable every minute that we were stretching and growing, but sometimes it's not, but at least you get to do it with a great group of smart people. Thanks for that, Dave. Um, my next question is for everybody. And Ashley, I'm going to ask you to start us off on this one and then popcorn it uh, to one of your fellow panelists. Um, so March, April, May, we meet, we met every other week. Tell me what was your favorite of the sessions of those live that we did on Zoom? Um, I mean, how do you choose? <laughs> um, we were given a lot of different um, things to discuss and I'm so thankful that my cohort um, was full of really dynamic people. Um, we had really engaging conversations. Um, I would have to say 
the dare to lead sessions were my favorite. Um, we we were able to be really vulnerable with one another um, and uh, just really discuss um, how we can be more brave um, in our spaces, in our roles, and really just talking about growth um, and passing that along or passing that down, sharing that with our teams. Um, and then of course, just finding new ways to uh, be innovative while being a brave leader. So that was definitely one of my favorite takeaways. And I will pass it to Caitlin. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. Um, well, I can honestly say that uh, when I looked at the schedule, there was one Friday in particular. Fridays, I, it was very manageable for me, even with a toddler running around, to uh, to devote the the hour a week. But when I saw four hours, I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is a long time." And then we got into it with Brooks E. Scott, who um, is from Merging Path. He's an executive coach. His background is just as diverse as the topics that he covers. Um, and I can tell you, I've never had four hours pass by so fast in my life that you just wanted more. Um, he was touching on all things diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I learned so much in that four hour period. Um, I, I just wish I had more time with him. And I think that a lot of the cohorts, uh, colleagues that I had in there with, with myself uh, agree that it was just one of the most valuable pieces of the entire experience. Um, I would definitely recommend more of, of Brooks uh, in this program for sure, because those four hours, as, as I said, they flew by and you felt like you got such a great understanding, but you definitely wanted more. So that was most certainly my favorite part. Um, Juliana? Yeah, I will have to copy Ashley, but my uh, favorite part was also there to lead. Uh, so basically, uh, through every Friday, we had four hours uh, every Friday. And uh, again, if you plan yourself accordingly, you can get the time and it, it's, it's uh, you know, it's worth it uh, to invest on yourself. So I see those four hours as something that you're investing on yourself, even though probably emails are piling up and calls are being you know, uh, put to voicemail. I think it's just, uh, it's very important if you want to continue to grow. And the Dare to Lead, we did a, an entire workshop on it and had tons of different assignments. Uh, and uh, uh, my favorite part of the Dare to Lead was discuss vulnerability, uh, how being leaders, sometimes we feel like we need to be strong, but when you're vulnerable, you can get a lot more done from your team and uh, uh, be a lot more honest with yourself. So um, it was definitely a great, uh, a great workshop and great program that we went through. I think that it was almost like uh, leadership slash uh, therapy of uh, trying to discover your strengths and your weaknesses and how you can uh, leverage them both um, at your work. So uh, I definitely enjoyed that. And I'll pass it to Dave. Thanks, Juliana. Um, and I got to say, I really appreciate hearing all that. Uh, even that sort of like that group therapy component is, you know, really ring, rings true with some of the the, the best of, of what the, the session sort of offered all of us, I think. Um, I'm going to have to say also for, for me, the, one of the most um, one of the most impactful sessions is with uh, Brooke Scott. Um, and, and he's an inspiring speaker to start off, uh, an amazing background. And uh, he was able to he was able to approach difficult topics and create safe space in the room, and I think create an extraordinary amount of awareness. Even even with the best intentions, we can stumble into um, unforeseen consequences, especially with with very with difficult, delicate topics. And in terms of uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, as he approached all this. Um, it was genuinely eye-opening for me. Um, it was it was the the a sense of even with with uh, with with good intentions that I, I I am more than capable of making mistakes. I'm confident that I'm still capable of making mistakes today. But it definitely changed my my awareness and changed my approach to these topics, my understanding of it, and so uh, incredibly meaningful. Um, and I'll pass it over to Connor. 
I, I can't one up that. I echo everything that was just said. Um, it was by far the 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 best and most impactful session uh, working with Brooks for me. And it, it was also extended also into giving and receiving feedback, which is something I personally struggle with. So uh, nothing better than seeing someone else put on the screen and saying, "All right, Caitlin, thank you for that situation. Time for me to give you feedback directly right now in front of everyone else." And seeing those live examples and again in, in a safe and inclusive space was uh, a real treat. Fantastic. Thank you all. And let's talk a little bit about the university programming that happens over the summer. It is asynchronous, which is great for summer schedules. Apart from that, uh, there's cohort calls in which we get together uh, for an hour on a Friday afternoon to break down some of the course material. So developing leaders uh, take a program with Cornell. So Juliana, if you and Ashley uh, could talk about your experience with Cornell programming, uh, Juliana, I'll ask you to go first. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we had uh, several modules that we had to go through. Every module takes two weeks. So I definitely recommend for people taking this, uh, this developing leader uh, course that you program yourself so you have uh, you know, at least three to five hours a week to dedicate to reading uh, the materials and, and assisting the class. Everything is done online, so you can do it at your own time. And uh, you definitely don't wanna leave it until the end. First, because they do have uh, certain exercises. Uh, every time you finish a part of the module, you need to, um, to submit your exercise. And also because Otherwise, you won't take much away from it if you're rushing uh, to try to finish on time. So you have to be really mindful of the deadline. Uh, after the deadline is done, uh, you can't go back. Uh, but as long as you plan yourself and you have an hour a day, I would say, you know, max five hours a week, you're able to, to complete it. And um, it's interesting because it's not just about our spirits industry. So it's about leadership in general. So it has, you know, classes about hiring more effectively, giving feedback effectively, um, you know, just leadership styles, how to deal with challenges on your team. So, and, and there are people from multiple industries participating of the course and, and there are chats uh, where you share experiences throughout the modules. Uh, so it's very interesting because you get to uh, do the courses and, and get uh, a lot of the tools that they give you to download afterwards so you can use it throughout your life. But also uh, you get to hear people sharing uh, different, um, different situations they went through in different industries. And then you have a check-in with Kate uh, once a month to discuss those modules. So you get to debrief what you just learned for our industry with our uh, partners in the core heart. So I think it's very balanced and uh, I definitely thought it was incredible. I uh, downloaded every single uh, you know PDF uh, of the courses and I keep going back to them quite often when I go through a situation and I'm like, oh I, I let me let me take a look back and see what we studied again and see how I can uh, put this into practice now. Yeah, um, I'll piggyback off of Juliana. I think she covered it really well. Um, for me, uh, just, you know, the Cornell courses were really um, valuable for me because um, a lot of the people that were in the courses with me were already managers. Um, I have not been a manager yet. So being able uh, to just see what other people have done in other experiences or um, also taking away um, the information and the content from the Cornell courses, um, such as leading with credibility, preparing for the future, just all different types of content that was really um, impactful for me moving forward in my career. Um, and just uh, the, the spaces themselves are really diverse. Again, like Juliana said, it wasn't just Bev Alk, it was all different types of people, all different types of industries, all different levels of um, their own careers. So being able to see that in real time and bring it back and, and of course, uh, give it, put it towards what I'm doing in my day-to-day -day was really helpful. I would say my favorite course was actually building a high functioning team. I never had to build a, a team, um, but it did make me think about my current team and how to make it better. 
Fantastic. Thank you both. For our executive cohort, there's a, a custom program developed by the University of Kentucky that is leadership within the context of the spirits industry. So unlike the Cornell program, for the developing leaders that is industry agnostic, the executives uh, get an education in leadership rooted in the industry. So Connor and Caitlin, I'd love to, for you to each speak to your experience with that curriculum and Connor, I'll ask you to go first. Yeah, sure, thank you. Um, yes, I think the the curriculum with the University of Kentucky, I think I saw a question out there so I can address it as well. It, it was all through Canvas, uh, you know, it's a lot of self, oh. it's a lot of self-guided learning. Um, so it's video sessions of the curriculum hosted by a professor that you then meet with and discuss the content live. Um, and there's, you know, a few homework assignments, but. Uh, for me, it was, you know, incredibly timely. Uh, I was joining a new company, um, which itself is a startup, which is trying to, to help determine its own internal culture. We were hiring people and creating onboarding plans. And so it was incredibly tactical and highly relevant to my day to day that I was currently living. So I was just kind of in, in heaven having direct access to these experts and to the to the cohort to bounce ideas off of and to see what works well and what doesn't work well. Uh, so for me, I, I found it high, highly relevant and, and supportive, for sure. I, um, I found a lot of the content um, timely as well, Connor, I was working on an onboarding program for our new um, field personnel in a, in a hybrid position, it's kind of a commercial marketing sales role. Um, and I was tasked with putting together an onboarding plan. And it was actually one of the courses that we had taken was how to put together an onboarding plan that was effective and inclusive. And it was great. It couldn't have come at a better time. Um, I can say that Overall, the, the Canvas courses, the time that it took that we were given to complete each one, even like I said earlier with a toddler and heavy workload, if, as long as you plan it and you have the calendar, like Dave said, aside and you have everything all together and you, you can get it done. It's not overwhelming. You just have to make the time and, and dedicate it to doing it. It felt, it felt very manageable to me. Um, I can also say that some of the content felt like a refresher, right? It, it was familiar to me. It's topics that I had seen either in past courses that I've taken or an experience that I had in the past. So it was a great baseline. It kind of set you up for what, what was to come. And I feel that as, if I didn't take that coursework with the Kentucky University, then the retreat would not have kind of come together the way that it did for me. Uh, the, the information that you get at the retreat with the live speakers, um, you know, pulls it all together, it's wrapped in a bow, and it all, it all flows very nicely. So um, it was very valuable. And um, I definitely refer, just like Juliana said, back to some of the content that we were given, and I'm able to implement a lot of the practices that, that I took from there as well. Well, my next question is to do with the retreat. So Caitlin, I'm going to bounce back to you to go first on this one. Um, this is the component of the program where we meet in person and are, are doing a lot of learning together uh, to wrap it all up and for the graduation. So talk to us about your perspective of the re retreat experience. The retreat was amazing. Um, I found the venue at which it was held at um, the place and the history that was involved in everything we were speaking about was really well put together. Um, the organization and Kate and Kate, I'll, I'll tell you this till I'm blue in the face, you did a phenomenal job of having us all together in one place learning the same things. It was imperative that you attend the, the retreat. I can't emphasize that enough. It was by far the most valuable piece of the entire thing for me. The ability to network with all of the people that you spent six to eight months with on Zoom is invaluable, right? Um, you can only do so much via a screen. When you're together, and especially in our industry, you tend to be more socially driven, I'd say, if, if you work in this industry. So but there is a value to connection and to being together. So everything that we learned, all of the emotions, all of the strengths, all of the weaknesses, all of the development really came together at the retreat. Um, I can also say that the networking possibilities uh, are 
endless. I mean, you're with a ton of people that are all kind of after the same goal as you, which is really cool, but from very different backgrounds. The levels of experience, the um, all different walks of life, that, that is the most important piece of this entire program. And without that, I mean, I think that it would have, it would have been very different. So I'm really happy that I went. I just wish it might've been a little longer because it was great. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, I'd love to uh, open it up if any of the others of you would like to offer some commentary on the retreat or any other parting words before we wrap up here. I'd like to. Um, at the retreat, just like Caitlin said, being able to meet all the people that you were around after about eight months was really impactful. I was able to walk away with a little sister group, um, which I didn't really have before in Bev Elk, um, you know, I have my coworkers and we have our own dynamic, but then to be able to build a little group because of this program is, is it's irreplaceable. It's something that you can't get anywhere else. So I definitely think that it's uh, a great addition to the program. Um, and also just being able to hug someone after Dare to Lead is <laughs> really great. <laughs> really great. <laughs> Yeah, full, full, full echo, amazing capstone to the, to the overall project. Um, and it happens, I, I forget this was mentioned, but it's, I, I, you know, not only did I get to meet Caitlin and my fellow executive cohort, but we got to meet Ashley and everyone in the developing leader cohort. And it was, you know, I, I remember actually the first, my, my first day I sat down next to Ashley to have lunch and it was the one of the highs of my, of my entire experience, just being inspired by her and her and her and her cohort all talking very honestly and earnestly about the material and the lessons and how exciting and it was just like god it was it was it, it was a a shot in the arm of adrenaline um for the for the long term of and just made me much very very proud to work in this industry to be part of the program i'll uh just jump in there with a, a sense i think uh to carry that forward of not only the retreat but actually the entire experience and the cohort and the relationships developed um Frankly, these are people who are in theory uh, competitors, and now that cohort is composed of my my peers, uh, people I consider colleagues, people I'm frankly just in, inspired by and impressed by, and grateful to to um, be able to reach out to them, be able to call them friends, uh, and to have that opportunity to just share this experience. Um, it's really meaningful uh, when when we're doing the classwork. It's really meaningful when we're at the retreat, and then it's been as meaningful, if not more so beyond that since uh since we com I completed the course so i'm just grateful to uh to to be a to be a part of it same and i would say that uh, kudos to kate too because she was uh, an incredible moderator uh she was able to get everybody to uh you know bring their full selves to to the um to the course and and i think it was extremely beneficial if it wasn't for kate it wasn't going to be the same so uh thank you kate <laughs> What a perfect note to end on. I gotta say, I'm a fan of that rap. Um, I appreciate you all for being here and I'll pass it back to Kate Brown. Thank you, Kate. And thank you to everyone um, on the call today, all of our panelists. I know there was a, a, a bunch of other things that we wanted to be able to advise on, but we didn't have the time. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at educationdistilledspirits.org whether it's um, you know, about the application process, um, if it's about you know, any, any of the topics that we mentioned or anything else that you have, could have a question on, please feel free to reach out. We're happy to chat with you more about the program or put you in touch with our graduate. Deborah, thank you so much for joining us. I know you've got to hop off very quickly, um, but if you have any questions for Deborah, please reach out to info at womenofthevine.com. And that's info at womenofthevine.com. Just a reminder that applications are due on January 27th. Uh, so don't wait till the last moment, get those in. And um, again, if we can be of any help, uh, please let us know. Thanks again for joining us. And I look forward to seeing all of your applications come through. Bye-bye. <laughs>